Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. God will do with his own whatever it takes to bring us to that place where we can say, Oh God, I cannot possibly look at me. I cannot possibly begin to think of myself as adequate, but oh God, the only thing that could possibly make me any different than anybody else on the, on the face of this planet is you. And I want you. See, there was, this wasn't just acknowledging a fact. This is, oh God, please come. I've got to have you. You ever felt, you ever feel that kind of a, of a, of a, almost a desperation? You've been in a situation where you just feel so desolate and so weak, you just cry, oh God, help me. By the way, didn't Jesus do that? Ah, strong crying and tears. He prayed and God heard him. You know, I believe with all my heart, that's what God's looking for from a lot of us. We so easily get complacent and even proud. And God wants to bring us to this place where he can come and just, he longs to take us in his arms and show us how incredible he is and how, what his purpose is for our, for our existence. And yet we're just so, things are cool, got my life. I know how to handle stuff. Oh, God, we need you. God, we need you. Come, do what only you have the power to do. The situation is that he's the only one that can fix. And all we can do is just lift up our hands and say, Lord, help us. But what a, an expression of a heart here that Moses just doesn't say, come and take care of my problems. Help me do my job. He says, show me your ways. Lord, I want you to continue to be pleased with, with me and, and to find my service to you acceptable, but I can't do that unless you teach me. Oh, God, my ways are not right, and I need you to deliver me from them. Oh, God, come and help me and bring me up short when I need to be brought up short. Lord, so that I can come. Oh, I thank God that there's a place when he does that that we can go. We don't have to wallow and think we can, you know, win him back by groveling. We win him back by saying, by confessing and saying, Lord, you see what I am. You see my need. But Lord, the, Jesus paid it all. Jesus went to the cross in my place. This thing that I've just been wrestling with, this failure, this whatever it is, that this manifestation of human nature that I've encountered, I don't have to sit here and, and wallow in that and try to convince you to be merciful to me. You already were merciful at the cross. So I look, for, I look away from that. I look to him, and I pin all of my hope on him, and I believe your promise that I can, I can stand in your presence right now as if I had never sinned. Do you think we need him? Oh, my, do we need him. But how merciful and how amazing he is, knowing what we are, that he is willing to come down, right down to where we live, and love us. So he says, teach me your ways so I may know you. There's this, this cry. Don't we hear that from the Apostle Paul? Paul wasn't just interested in correcting his theology. He wanted to know the one that he had encountered on that Damascus road. Oh, God, I want to know you. I want to get close to you. I want to, I'll tell you, God is going to put us in situations where that's the only answer. Where we're, go we're going to either harden our hearts and, and push away and pull away, or we're going to say, oh, God, I surrender. God, I come. I need you right now. I don't know who's here this morning that has that, that has that sense of need in your heart. I don't even know how long this is going to go on. Somebody else may need to jump in, but 
I've just had this sense. I mean, you could go all over the Scripture with, the, with our need of His presence. That's, that's, a, that's a given. You can easily write a sermon on that, but the Lord wouldn't let me. Thank God, because you don't need a sermon. You need His Word. Teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. But look what he does next. How easily do we fall into the trap of thinking of our spiritual lives as all about me and where I'm at and what I'm experiencing do I feel like I'm, I'm on solid ground and things are going great and I'm happy, happy and enjoying your presence? Is your spiritual life wrapped up in you? Here is Moses praying not just for himself, God help me, but God remember this people is your people. There's a sense of urgency in praying for others. He's not just content to say, oh God, I want to, I want to know you, and I want to have this personal, private little thing, but oh God, I'm not alone in this. I'll tell you, there's, there are needs in our midst that we need to pray. There are needs in our midst that will not be met without the prayers of God's people. We need to cry out. If you know about something, we need to lay hold of heaven and say, oh God, change the situation. We don't need to go through a meeting and walk through our traditions and, and, and hug everybody that we haven't seen, sing happy songs, hear truth we're comfortable with, and then go on and feel like, man, that was a wonderful meeting, and nothing has really changed. Moses was looking for some real, something that was going to change the situation. And so how did the Lord answer this prayer? Teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. This is the cry of his heart. I don't think these were casual words. I believe there was a, there was a, a sense of desperation, don't you? I mean, put this in the historical context. See what's going on there. He's just been on the mountain. He's come down. The people are already, you know, going crazy. They wind up having to kill a bunch of them, and then the Lord says, I ain't going with you. Now he's got to deal with this. Do you think maybe there was just a little bit of that sense of desperation? Oh, God, what's going on here? Oh, God, come. And the Lord said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. I believe there's many of us that are in situations in our lives that we're struggling with. There's anxiety, there's fear. But I believe with all my heart there's a God who longs for us to come to Him and to come to Him with a sense of urgency and say, oh God, help me to come Help me to learn from this. Help me to come into the center of your heart and your will in this situation. It may be an internal need. It usually involves that. It may be a situation. It may be a loved one that just that needs the Lord. But, oh, God, come. But, you know, there has to come a time when we, we see in him someone who's not looking for us to qualify ourselves to get our prayers answered. Think about that one. You know, I made that point the other night when we were praying for people and Joel had read something. And you see the, you see the people in the, in the first century praying and God answering a prayer and how easy it is to read something like that and sort of think that they're different. There was a purity about them. There was this, there was that. I'm not like that. So I can't go to God and expect him to do stuff. Do you really, in your heart of hearts, or at least in your mind, do you really think that they were that different from us? Really? Seriously? Which is it? 
Every single child of God is a sinner saved by grace. These were ordinary people. They probably didn't know half the stuff God has helped us to understand. But they went to God from their hearts and they cried out, and God, in this case, Peter was delivered from prison. But I believe that God wants us to come on the foundation, not of our ability, not on the foundation of anything that's, a, that's in us, but to come and say, oh, God, cleanse me. But, but God, this isn't just about me. Lord, come in power and change hearts and change lives. Do you really believe God is reluctant or that he's holding out or that we haven't done it, we haven't held our mouth right exactly when we, when we prayed that? Or do we, or we have the privilege of coming to him in faith? Knowing the kind of God, knowing that this is the very thing he wants. He's not mad at us trying to hold, hold out on us and say, oh, I'll just, when you get it right, this is a God who longs to be with his people. He longs for people who want to know him and want to learn his ways. He knows that we're not there. He knows everything that's wrong with us, everything that's lacking. But he also knows that he has everything that we need, that we have the right to come to him and expect him to answer the cries of our hearts. This isn't just about Moses. You know, in the Old Testament, God did work through special people. You had prophets, you had priests, you had some people that, in a sense, stood between the people and God. But we are living in a, in a covenant that has changed all of that. This covenant, the, the Lord said through the prophets, he looked ahead and said, I'm going to make a new covenant. It's not like the covenant you have now. This is one where everybody's going to know me from the least to the greatest. They will all know me. Every single person in the body of Christ is a priest. Every one of us can go to God on behalf of somebody else. Every one of us can come to him on the basis of the cross for ourselves and cry out and say, oh, God, I need your presence right now in my life. I don't want to do what I'm doing alone. In fact, I'm going to say like Moses, God, if you don't go with me, don't make me go. I ain't going. I, I pray the Lord will answer this prayer, but I have prayed that many times about ministry. God, if you're not going to get up here, and, if you're not going to minister, don't ask me to preach. I don't have any special need to be up here. I would gladly have sat there this morning and listened to someone else. That's the truth. I argued with the Lord about it. You ever do that? You ever argue with the Lord? And he just kept, he keeps very patiently making it evident that this is where you're supposed to be, this is where you're supposed to go. He said, all right, Lord, it's on you. But you know that's what he wants. He doesn't want us to have this kind of reluctant relationship with him. He wants us to get to where we know his ways and we're willing to stretch forth our hands. Like he told Peter, when you're old, when you're more mature, you'll stretch forth your hands. Another will gird you and carry you where? Where you don't want to go. <laughs> Because if we went the way our human nature would take us, it wouldn't be God's way. But I'll tell you, God calls us out of the path that the, the world is walking. He calls us to be something different. But what is it that makes us different? We have better traditions. We have a better history. We have better what? There's only one possible factor that could make us any different than anybody else in the world, and that's what, when he's here. Do you think maybe we need to be crying out? Or should we just perhaps assume? Don't we do that a lot? We just come and do the same things we've been doing and assume he's going to show up and how merciful he is. But there is no substitute for a heart that reaches out and says, oh, God, 
Without you, I can't do anything. And I don't want to be without you, Lord. I, I feel my need. I feel the desolation of, of my situation. You have allowed this, Lord, so I can know that I'm in need. It's your love that's shown me my need because you long to be the one to come and to fill it. What an awesome promise that the Lord, Lord gave him. He just told him, I ain't going with you. Now he says, my presence will go with you. He looked for a man out of that whole nation that really wanted to know him. You know, is it any wonder that David wrote in, in one of the Psalms, he made known his ways to Moses, but his acts, his deeds to the children of Israel. They never understood his ways. Remember that? It says that in the Scriptures. The, the Israelites as a whole never understood what was going on. They never learned his ways. And you think about what Moses was facing. He knew he knew he had a bunch of people that just, here's God to say, I'm, I'm not going with you, and we're on our own, and we're in a bunch of nations that have, that have these supernatural powers. It's not just that they're giants or they're this or they're that, but they got, I mean, we're, we're hopelessly surrounded by, the, by powers that are greater than we are. Does that not apply to us today? You and I live in a world that is rapidly being overtaken by darkness. And the spirit of the age will do everything in its power to bring us to a place where we just rock along and don't have this deep sense of, oh God, we've got to have your presence. Lord, we, will not, we won't even come together if you, don't, if you don't show up. We're not interested in playing church. We're not interested in anything except your presence. I don't know what else to say, but this is, but do you, do you not see what, what Moses' heart was and how God brought him to that place and how, how the simple promise, my presence will go with you and I'll give you what? Oh, how many, how many of you are candidate for some rest in your heart and your spirit this morning? Has he not promised, take my yoke, learn from me, this same sense of the stuff I don't know, I don't know how to live, learn from me, and I'll, you know, I'll, bring you, I'll, I'll give you rest, take my yoke and learn from me, and, I, and you'll find rest for your souls. There's two different things there. But I don't know, I just feel like coming into a meeting, we need the Lord in a, in a way we perhaps haven't. I'm so thankful for things that happened 50 plus years ago. That's great. That was then. What about now? Do we not need the Lord now to invade lives and to change hearts and change lives? Are we just going to come and say, that was wonderful. I, that's great truth. You're reiterating all the stuff that we know and we were encouraged by it. That's wonderful. We need more than that. That's the danger. You can go on in that kind of a in that kind of a form, and it, all it becomes is a dead form, and the Lord's not in it. We need Him. Do you feel, do you sense that at all? We need to cry out to the Lord. I don't know what else to say. I don't, it may be just that we need to stop and pray. And ask the Lord to help us to pray so it's not just a little form we go through. Ask the Lord to bring something to your, your own needs to your mind. Ask Him to bring the needs for somebody that you're concerned about. That God will just go before and break up soil and do whatever it takes to change someone's heart and someone's life. How else is it going to happen? Do we just come and think, oh, there's anointed preaching here. It'll take care of everything. That's not how the kingdom of God works. God works through every member. And prayer is the undergirding force that releases God's power to actually work. So, praise God. I, 
I, I'm thankful the Lord has just let me ramble on this morning, but that's all right. I believe there's a, there's a burden. It's not information you need today. It's not information I need. These are the things we know. We need him. But do you think if we ask him, he'll actually answer? Do we have to qualify ourselves, or has Jesus already qualified us? So what does the Scripture say? You have not because you ask not. Well, how about let's ask? This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. While it is not required, a donation of $10 for DVDs and $5 for CDs is suggested to help with expenses. Also, for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your requests to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then. Thank you.